What are your superpowers again? Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? I'm rich. Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. When it comes to controversial dudes like Elon Musk or even Andrew Tate, you can love them or you can hate them. But one thing's for sure, he can't ignore them. Well, what color is your baguette? All the huge stacks of cash they've got at home. That's right, we're all just a bunch of opportunists when it comes to the big bucks, but the money's always the motive, isn't it? That's right. Now, this isn't just a human thing or even a villain thing for that matter. Superheroes love cash too, no matter how much they might say they don't. But well, what's the Dude, use of having it healthy? and owning it healthy. a race car yeah. if you don't drive it? I mean, come on. Do you really think guys like Hawkeye get to buy all their super expensive gear with the goodness of their hearts? <laughs> I didn't think so. Nice car. Look, I might not be at Norman Osborne levels of wealth, but I am somewhat of a businessman myself. So here I am presenting to you the best times when superheroes flex their money in the movies. We have to get back to my lab and use a satellite to scan the Earth for thermal anomalies. I'm already on it. I'm sorry, you have a satellite? I have six. It was obvious we were going to start off with DC's very own Richie Rich, right? Batman's got more money than he can handle, so you'd imagine that he'd end up spending a lot of it on stuff that he doesn't really need. Take this scene, for instance, from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Cyborg and Flash need to find a satellite ASAP. He, he, was, he was trying to superheat it. You know, he made the core the hottest thing on Earth outside of a nuclear reactor. So Bruce Wayne comes to the rescue by offering his own. Now, Cyborg's pretty much a robot, so he wouldn't have found this interesting, but Flash sure did. So he's naturally surprised over Batman's assets. That's when the Cape Crusader takes it a step up and reveals... You have a satellite? I have six. Now, listen, I understand that billionaires are a bit eccentric, but really, six satellites? What on earth are you monitoring, bro? Greta Thunberg's email ID? If this was Tony Stark, I mean, I'd probably understand that. But with that kind of tech, Batman's got more connectivity than AT&T. You know what? Maybe he's just trying to start his only Bats channel. Wow, it's like a cave. It's like a Bat cave. Very. But what's the Dude, use of having it healthy, and owning it healthy. a race car if you don't drive it? Speaking of the billionaire legend, here he is in all of his raw glory. Iron Man 2 is kind of a hit or miss movie, but it did give us some of Tony Stark's best moments as a playboy who just loves to blow his cash. Those Merlin engines are fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, good idea for an electric jet. You do? Yeah. Then we'll make it work. I'm sure you might agree that big boys love big toys, and Iron Man's no exception to that logic. However, the reason why he's the man is because he doesn't just keep his stuff as showpieces. He uses them whenever he can. You can see it in full effect when he gets into his Formula One race car and drives it all by himself. Now, I don't know what his skill level is as a professional racer, but the whole point of this flex is that Iron Man does whatever Iron Man wants to do. Sure, the movie kind of backfires on him when Whiplash shows up and slices the race car, but then again, it's not like a loaded Dude, boss man's gonna mind that now, is he? For three hours, you got me standing. Waiting on you now. Let's go. Come on. Wheels up. Rock and roll. No, I just keep beating. I won't take the settlement. Money's irrelevant. I need heat to energize. Bruce Wayne, what makes you think you can decide who's running Wayne Enterprises? Well, the fact that I'm the owner. The company went public a week ago. And I bought most of the shares. Don't you just hate it when your board tries to throw you out of your own company? Well, that might be a hindrance to others, but Bruce Wayne just takes it as a chance to serve some karma, hot and fresh. The key thing is, our company's future is secure. Earl was probably my least liked character from the entire Dark Knight trilogy. Like, I'd support Ra's al Ghul over this grumpy raisin. Anyway, Earl tries to play saboteur and makes Wayne Enterprises public, but what follows is a somewhat private humiliation. It's bad enough for him to see that Fox has taken up his position, but the real burn here is when Bruce tells him, The company went public a week ago. And I bought most of the shares. Now that's good enough to qualify as a flex, but Bruce spices it up even more by using Earl's own words against him. But the important thing is that my company's future is secure. I'm also going to shout out Morgan Freeman here for delivering the final nail in the coffin when he asks Earl, Didn't you get the memo? Come on, man, I want to hear more of your voice in movies, not just the new Metro Boomin' album. You're never short of a few freeloaders like yourselves to fill up your mansion with, so all of you... <laughs> Two-faced friends, you sycophantic suck-ups. Stop smiling. It's not a joke. Please leave. The party's over. Get out. Yeah. Lab's all set up, boss. Oh, actually, he's the boss. I just pay for everything and design everything. And 
make everyone look cooler. As convenient as it might be to have superheroes saving us, it's not like we can afford to pay for their services. Like, you're not gonna pay the Hulk a million dollars every time you ask him to smash. And of course, the government only likes to take money, not the other way around. So thank God for Iron Man, because he's able to foot the bill for the entire Avengers team with his endless supply of big bucks. You could argue that the billionaire should use his money for good, but then again, you're not the one with a flourishing military company now, are you? Tony makes sure he puts his point across when Maria Hill calls him boss in Age of Ultron. He simply points to Captain and says, Oh, well, actually, he's the boss. I just pay for everything and design everything and make everyone look cooler. Well, you're not wrong there, my man. The entire Avengers team owes you a lifetime of gratitude. Also, any chance you could send me some of that dough as an act of goodwill? All of your projects have just been approved and funded. No streets, no taxes, just reframe the future. Ah, oh, Tony, so generous, so much money, wow. <laughs> Speaking of goodwill, like, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, I'm gonna cut you out of my estate. Just kidding. It's not like I got one in the first place. How did you get the house back from the bank? I bought the bank. But when it comes to superheroes, there aren't many rich guys, so you're going to see a lot of Batman and Iron Man entries here, okay? It's not like Black Panther likes to flex anyway, is it? So Superman's having a hard time getting his house sorted, but his buddy Bruce swoops in with all his glory and says everything's going to be fine without any reasonable explanation. Naturally, even I'd be surprised to hear something like that out of the blue. So I'm totally on Superman's side when he asks Bruce what he did to make the problem go away. The answer was pretty simple. I bought the bank. Now this is some other level of flexing, bruh. The whole bank. Slayer reflex with me, I don't know. I wonder if Batman had an account in the same bank. Like, how would that even have worked? A bank being bought by his own money. That's some inception level gameplay. He said, get out. Yeah, I hate to see this. I'm gonna throw you a fundraiser. That's nice of you, Bruce, but I'm not up for re-election for three years. No, you don't understand. One fundraiser with my pals, you'll never need another set. Listen, none of us are perfect, right? If I'm breaking up with my girlfriend and see her with another dude the next day, I am gonna be salty, right? The only difference between me and Bruce Wayne, though, is that I can't even flex any cash to establish dominance. The famous Bruce Wayne. Rachel's told me everything about you. I certainly hope not. Just look at how he owns Harvey Dent over here. First of all, he gets the hotel's waiters to join his tables together with Harvey's and Rachel's because, well. I own the place. After rubbing that in his opponent's face, later to become Two-Face, Batman proceeds to mock Harvey by saying he's gonna throw him a fundraiser. Dude, come on, man. I know he's with your girl now, but have some mercy, man. Unfortunately, Harvey tries to act a little tough with his billionaire competitor, and as expected, he gets owned once again when Bruce says, One fundraiser with my pals. You'll never need another set. Now this might seem petty to some, but I actually think it's the classy thing to do. I mean, he could have just as easily got into Patrick Bateman mode and gone full American Psycho on Harvey. Also, why would Rachel go to her ex-boyfriend's hotel with her current boyfriend? She totally loves the drama, don't she? You look tired, Alfred. You'll be all right without me? If you can tell me to rush in for apply your own bloody suntan lotion. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. Mm, a lot of Batman entries, eh, here? You've got the Nolan trilogy to thank for that, because that man sure knows how to make a sassy character. Anyway, this one's from a not-so-sassy movie, although it still establishes Bruce Wayne as a mega-millionaire. Recruiting people for your team is no easy task, but boy, the money sure does make it easier. Just ask those folks to Twitter right before they were told to actually work for their living. Batman tries to get Barry Allen over to his side. You're the Batman? So you're fast. But then he's presented with a very simple question. What are your superpowers again? Now, I'm gonna be honest here. The moment Batfleck opened his mouth for a split second, I thought he was gonna say, I'm Batman. But hey, even film experts like the TV region can get it wrong sometimes, right? And I'm very happy that this was the case here. I'm rich. Also, that line delivery was probably the best acting I've seen from Ben Affleck since Gone Girl. Use eyeliner, bro. It helped Robert Pattinson, didn't it? People are a little slow. I'll try to keep up. Can I keep this? Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy for 
Now there might not be too many Iron Man entries here, but that doesn't mean he's an undisputed GOAT. Tony Stark's the kind of man who likes to be sassy and savage, so you won't really see him flexing his wealth as much as his wit. It establishes his swag and also his general characterization. However, that doesn't mean he's not going to put you in your place if you try to act smart with him. For example, take the iconic scene where Captain America says, Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? That leads to Iron Man's most meme-worthy line ever. Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Sure, he adds on his wealth by mentioning all his other traits, but you get the idea, right? You're not the guy to make the sacrifice play? To lay down on a wire and let the other guy crawl over you? I think I would just cut the wire. I mean, there are plenty of rich people all over the world, but it's personality that sets the men apart from the boys. Now, you might be a little surprised that this one's coming in at number two, right? Don't worry, number one definitely earns its spot. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Big man. What? Big man. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I'm buying this hotel and uh, setting some new rules about the pool area. I love European women. They've got charm, class, and they're much more fun to be around in general, you know? Batman definitely understands that, as we see him entering a hotel with two of them. There's not a single care given as the girls enjoy themselves in the fountain as if they're trying to shoot a music video for a mumble rapper. Of course, it's human nature to be jealous of those doing better than you, so the hotel manager tries to spoil Bruce's party by asking him to take his lady friends and leave. That's his cue to put the manager in his place by saying he's buying the hotel and changing the rules so that he can accommodate both his madams. To add insult to injury though, he even jumps into the fountain with his baby to establish that ultimate Sigma male dominance. I mean, that must have felt pretty good. But was it worth buying an entire hotel? It's not like he's putting a dent in his pocket anyway, I suppose. It's not who you are underneath. It's what you do that defines you. It's not who I am underneath. But what I do that defines me. Bruce? And there you go. Those are my picks for the best scenes when superheroes flex their money in the movies. Think I can blow some more cash? Let me know in the comments and I'll hustle in another volume for you. Like, share and subscribe for good vibes as we welcome 2023 and I wish you a very happy and blessed new year. I'll see you soon on the TV region.